Have you ever been told that it only needs a simple part, most likely a spark plug or some fuel lines for something to work? I know I have. But unfortunately, I didn't get that bit of information with this one. So this was posted as a free mower at the curb, so no questions were answered. It was only a grab and go situation and even though I was grateful to get it, what happened next was far from ordinary. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Black Max lawnmower, and the problem is that I just picked it up and I'm not sure if it runs. So I've lost count of how many lawnmowers I've been able to find using the free section of apps that you can get on your phone. And even though this one looks like a good find, this one is kind of a mixed bag for me. The reason I say that is because even though I'm a huge fan of Honda engines, I don't really care for this style of choke system. Don't worry, when you see it at work, you'll understand why I say that. Now, I'm going to try and repair this lawnmower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Now, this mower did come with gasoline in the tank, and that could either be a good thing or a bad thing, considering if it's old and stale. But before we even consider trying to start it, we need to check on the condition and the level of the oil that's in the engine. Now, oddly enough, there seems to be good oil in it, meaning someone changed the oil recently. And as far as the oil level, it appears to be full, further proving that someone just did an oil change and even made sure there was plenty in it. So why don't I like this choke system? Simple, it's based around a time delay, which is supposed to help you, but in my eyes, it's not very forgiving. So after moving the choke lever to the start position, it's supposed to hold it there until you depress the brake handle. And once released, you have about 2 or 3 seconds of choke until it turns itself off. Now the problem is, if for some reason you can't get it started, you'll have to do this whole procedure again, which seems very annoying to me. Now unfortunately it didn't start, now there could be a problem with the carb, so this time I'm going to put some fuel into the carb and try that again. Luckily it started and ran for a couple of seconds, which is great news. I now have to wonder if the gasoline that's in the tank might be old and stale or maybe it has some water in it. So here's what came out of the fuel tank and surprisingly, it doesn't look that bad. So it still smells like gasoline and not paint thinner and if you look at it from the top, I also don't see any water in there either. Now, I'm not saying that this gasoline is fresh from the pump, but the reason for it not starting is probably not related to the gasoline. After making some room for a drip pan, we also find out that the belt for the self-propel is missing so we'll have to source that at a later time. But right now, I want to make taking the carb off the engine just a little bit tidier by draining the fuel bowl before we take it off. Now you don't have to do this part, but it does make less of a mess, and if you want to find out how much of a mess, skip this part and find out for yourself. Now the fuel that was in the bowl looks pretty much the same as the stuff that came out of the fuel tank, which is kind of bad news. I was hoping that the fuel that was in the bowl would have had water in it or something explaining why it didn't want to start on its own. Now one of the biggest reasons why a lot of consumers don't care for this engine is the way the carb is installed to the engine. Once loose, the carb and all the gaskets and spacers can come apart and now you have to remember how to put them all back together later on. And if you do get it wrong, well let's just say that there's a very good chance for it not to work. So this is the lever for the choke flap and it's not stuck and moving just like it's supposed to so there are no problems here. Now this metal piece is the part that makes contact with it and it doesn't do much without the carb sitting where it's supposed to be so we'll have to check that out later on. Now as far as I can tell there is nothing from the outside telling me that there's a problem with this carb so next we'll go in the inside and take a look around. After carefully taking the bowl off what we find in there is very surprising. The bottom of the bowl is completely clean. I was expecting to see some corrosion or possibly a lot of sediments. That means we could have a clogged jet preventing fuel from making it through the carb. Now, when taking out the main fuel jet, be very careful and make sure you use the widest flathead you can, otherwise you could damage it. Now, this is not the main jet. Instead, this part is the emulsion tube, but we still need to check and make sure all the openings in it are not clogged. And if you do find some of them to be clogged, use a bit of small wire to open the back up, but compressed air also works as well. So this is the main jet and the fuel has to pass through it first to get to the rest of the carb. Now if yours is clogged, it would explain why the engine wouldn't start, however this one is completely cleared which is just kind of odd. Now despite that fact, I'm still going to run my cleaning wire through it just to make sure it's as clear as possible. I also took out the needle and float to see if there's a blockage in the fuel inlet for the carb. However, that was also clear too, so now I'm beginning to get concerned. 
While I'm here, I'm also going to check on the pilot jet to make sure it's not clogged, but what I find is a clear opening, further proving that the carb is not the problem. So what I just discovered is that the carb was for once working just like it's supposed to, and that the problem is somewhere else on the engine. So regrettably, we have to put the carb back together again, and then search for another reason why this engine didn't start. So if the carb itself is working the way it's supposed to, what else will be keeping this engine from starting then? The next thing we need to check on to see if it's working correctly is the choke system. Remember me saying that I didn't care for this style of choke system? Well this time we're going to get a better look at it and maybe you'll see why I feel that way. Next, I want to get down to the choke lever and show you how it works. And to get a better view of it, we'll need to take off the plastic cover for the engine. So what you're looking at is the flywheel brake, the ground switch for the coil, and finally the release for the choke. When you close the brake handle, it not only releases the brake, it ungrounds the coil so the engine can run, but it also moves the linkage for the choke delay. This lever will release the lock holding the delay and gives you time to start the engine before the choke is automatically turned off. Now the reason this is designed this way is to make it more convenient for the user and make sure the engine won't be running while it's being choked. Now if I had to guess as to another reason why this was done was probably because of pollution. Running an engine while it's choked will cause it to pollute more and that's something that's not tolerated nowadays. Now in the meantime, I'm going to lubricate the contact and moving parts of the choke and start to put it all back together. So why do I think this engine didn't start then? Well considering all the facts we've seen, I'm guessing it's a combination of issues and not just one item. I'm going to guess that even though the fuel was not stale, it's probably not fresh enough to use either. Also, the choke system being based around a timer doesn't give you enough leeway to get it started in a timely manner. Now those are the only items we checked. We didn't check on any part of the ignition system or even on the health of the engine, both of which could greatly affect if the engine even starts. If the engine is worn out due to poor oil maintenance, the chances of the engine starting and running is highly unlikely, and if it does start, it'll be down on power. So as you can see, having to organize all the gaskets, carb, and insulator on the studs is a real pain, especially if you're doing this for the first time. My only advice is to take it slow and be very careful as it's very easy to get one of these parts out of place. The last hurdle is to make sure that the metal arm for the choke delay is in the correct location for the choke lever. In fact, there are so many opportunities to make mistakes when putting this car back on that getting it right the first time is kind of rare. After getting the carb and the airbox back on the engine, it's imperative that you test out if the choke system is working correctly. And luckily for us, this one is working just like it should be, but if yours is not acting like this, you'll have to take it off and try installing it again. Now I do want to mention that anytime you mess with the carb, just like we did with this one, after adding fuel to the tank and opening the fuel valve, you're going to need to wait. The reason why is because after taking the carb apart, sometimes when reassembling it, there could be a problem which could cause a leak. And the last thing that you want is to have a carb that's leaking gasoline for obvious reasons. It's just not safe, so wait and watch for any leaks to show up. Now this could take one minute or a couple of minutes, so you can either just be patient or go do something for a couple of minutes and then come back. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to install the cover for the missing belt, and luckily for us, I don't see any gasoline on the mowing deck. Next, I'll replace the air filter and its cover, then choke the carb, and then try starting it. So strangely enough, it didn't start, which shouldn't be possible. Next, I'll try priming the engine with some gasoline and try that again. So now I'm really worried. Worried enough to pull out the compression tester and see just how worn out this engine really is. Now we want to see a reading well over 100 psi and the higher the better. Now if the reading is well below 100 psi, that would indicate that the engine is worn out and that would explain why it's so tough to start. So the reading is a staggering 182 psi, which has to be the highest reading I've ever seen on an engine for a mower. That means this engine is not worn out. In fact, it is extremely healthy, meaning the problem is not with the engine, at least internally. Even using the drill to try and start it didn't help. The only thing that's left is that somehow we lost spark from the ignition system. Thank you. 
So it looks like this aftermarket spark plug is now faulty and the spark isn't happening at the tip of the plug but rather on the side of the electrode which is not ideal. We're going to try that test again but this time we're going to be using a spark plug from my trusty Honda mower instead. So only after testing it for a couple of seconds you can already see a huge difference which means I think this mower was given away because of a bad spark plug. Next we'll install the used factory plug into this engine then try starting it and hopefully it'll start and run otherwise there are only a couple of other possibilities left to check. Well I think that pretty much confirms my worst fear. This engine only needed a spark plug to run. Now this doesn't happen all the time. In fact I think there was only a couple of times in the last 10 years this has ever happened. Oh don't worry about the smoke. There must have been some oil in the muffler but it's all gone now. So how much have I invested into this project up until now? Well the mower was free. All I had to do was go and get it. The spark plug was used but eventually I replaced it with a brand new one. So that's only $7. The oil was $2 and the rope was also $2 as well. That means I've got a very healthy self-propelled mower for about 11 bucks and a couple of hours into it, which is not bad at all. So my question is, have you ever just had to replace one small part to get a machine working again? And if so, what was it and what part did you end up replacing? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.